Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Joseph Bellanti, a professor of pediatrics and microbiology and immunology and director for the International Center for Interdisciplinary Studies of Immunology at Georgetown University Medical Center. Welcome. Yes. You established the International Center for Interdisciplinary Studies of Immunology at Georgetown University Medical Center in 1975. Will you share the journey that led you to realize that such a center was necessary? Yes, it became apparent to me early on that no one group had all the answers to immunology. The answers were coming from both the basic scientists and the clinicians. And there was no format to accommodate that interchange. So most medical schools are, and institutions are vertically uh, structured. You have a department of anatomy, biology, uh, microbiology, chemistry, and so forth and the clinical pediatrics, medicine, and surgery, and so forth. So immunology is a transsectional field. So we decided early on, based upon consultation with colleagues, that a new framework was necessary that was not vertical, but was horizontal. And it transected all of the institutions and departments. So that's why we developed a um, interdisciplinary, meaning both basic and clinical, interdisciplinary center of immunology. But also, fortunately for us in Washington, we received a lot of students and scientists from other countries. So it became an international center for interdisciplinary studies of immunology. Mm -hmm. We're here at uh, AFRM uh, Los Angeles at a conference, and you kicked off this uh, weekend's uh, events with a presentation titled Immunology 101, a review for clinicians, and have spent decades educating clinicians on immunology. Are there any recurring misconceptions or gaps of knowledge within this clinical area that you've witnessed throughout the time that you've been teaching this topic? Well, um, there has been a change. I wouldn't say a, a deficit, but there's been an acquisition of new knowledge. Uh, it came and it dawned on all of us that immunology was really genetically controlled. Everything we do, the immune response responds to foreign substances. And occasionally, the immune system is not beneficial. We see the manifestations of allergy, autoimmune disease, chronic infection, and cancer as sequelae of an inappropriately um, working system. I think the newest area that has entered the field is not just genetics, but epigenetics. There are things, genetics means that the DNA of a cell controls gene expression. And it, it, it is the, the data now that's coming from several centers, including our own, is that the genetic expression is controlled by epigenetic forces that come from the environment. Uh, for example, smoking or obesity or infection or exposure to chemicals or pesticides can turn on the gene expression or turn it off. And that's where the key, I think, to immunology and the future direction is going to be. So uh, I'm very uh, excited about these developments and hope to continue this and encourage our students and fellows to pursue these lines of investigation. Mm -hmm. You were doing a book signing this weekend. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about your book? Well, the book that I was signing represented the fourth book that I uh, was fortunate enough to have published. The first book 
was published in 1971. It was a little green book, it had 600 pages, and it was the first book, I'm happy to say, that gave some clinical application. All the books up until that time were written for laboratory personnel. Uh, you put a serum or an antigen and an antibody in a tube and you shake it and you get a precipitate or you uh, add cells and they're lysed and they're broken up. But there was very few books that talked about what does the, these principles of immunology and mechanisms have to do with patients. So the first edition that was published in 1971 was uh, fortunately one of the first books to do that. Subsequently, uh, another, the second edition was published in 1978 and a third edition in 1985. Now, a lot happened and I was really tied up with a lot of other administrative and uh, scientific issues. So I didn't have a chance to write the fourth edition until 2012. And that was the book that I was able to bring to this meeting and sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fourth edition. For a closing thought, uh, as of today, this is February 2020, uh, end of February, uh, the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, is, is um, a, a massive concern globally. And um, we're, we're trying to figure out uh, how to stem the tide and how to avoid getting sick. And do you have any thoughts on, uh, on the uh, COVID-19 and what we're going through? Yes, I do. And I've discussed this with my colleagues. And uh, we're attempting to bring a, perhaps a new light to uh, how to manage this and deal with it. The first thing is this virus represents a new virus that individuals are not immune to. So that means that when it's introduced into a population of susceptibles, infection occurs. Now, the main manifestations of this disease are fever and difficulty breathing, involvement of the lungs particularly. And the immune system is an important part of the story. In this case, and in probably many other cases, the pathology is not only due to the virus killing cells, but part of it is due to the immune response that instead of helping the patient, is contributing to the pathology. And I'll give you an example. There are parts of the immune system called cytokines that are the hormone-like messenger molecules that the cells of the immune system talk to each other. And some of these cytokines promote inflammation with cells coming in and redness and edema and so forth, and others turn off the immune system. And some of these cytokines that are produced, particularly the interferon gamma have been shown to be detrimental to the disease. And one of the thoughts that we have been discussing is while we're, research is being directed to a new vaccine, and that's gonna take some time, we can treat this cytokine increase, and it's called cytokine storm. It's a storm that promotes inflammation and if it's serious enough, it impairs breathing and, of course, death. There are ways of neutralizing those dangerous cytokines by antibodies. And we do have antibodies that are directed against these interferons and other cytokines. And I'm going to propose very shortly that uh, this be considered is part of the treatment, particularly of the seriously ill patients. And that may tide them over and uh, lead to recovery before we get a chance to develop a vaccine. So we need something to intervene 
to put a damper on the, uh, the things that are leading to death. The immune response to the, the immune to response the in this case infection. may not be always beneficial. It may contribute to the pathology. Right. So we have to way, figure out ways of stopping that, that part of the process. And, and uh, what's the path that you, who, who would you talk to about that? Do you have Well, in order to do this, um, this particular interferon that I'm concerned about is called interferon gamma. There are three types of major interferons. There's interferon al alpha, beta, and gamma. The interferon alpha and beta help kill viruses. The interferon gamma more regulates the immune system. And there are companies, there is a company now that makes that antibody to interfere on gamma uh, located in Sweden. And uh, we're going to pursue, as soon as I get back to Washington on Monday, contacting them and working with the NIH and with the FDA, because you have to get pr approval for these sure. things, uh, to make sure that if we decide to use this, that it's safe, it's not going to hurt the patient, but uh, with a prospect of doing some good. Yeah, that's important. So I need to contact, we need to contact several of the federal groups and agencies in order if this is going to happen. Yeah. The other approach to treatment, of course, is uh, there are many pharmaceutical companies that are trying to develop drugs, antiviral drugs, so that will kill the virus. But we're aiming not at the virus, but at the immune system that's dangerous. Right. As, as perhaps uh, a stopgap. A stopgap yeah, uh, measure, yes. Right, right. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for, for joining us here at the conference, presenting and, and joining us on Redefining Medicine. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you.